Okay. So, 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 hello. Let me. Let me see. Okay, so hello guys, welcome back to my weekly live session. So if you're in, feel free to drop some comments and tell me where you are. Give some likes, give some love. Right, so for those who doesn't know, um, I am Esther from EC Metaphysics. Okay, you're at my page here perhaps if you're watching this live. Hello, Ivan. Right, so um, basically my weekly live session, <clears throat> mainly I touch on application topics. Uh, I hardly would do more technical stuff at my live sessions, unless, you know, um, I'll bring in some in between. Uh, but most of the time, I, I would like to talk about applications and perhaps uh, give ideas of different percep perspect uh, perspective on certain matters, right? So today's topic, right, uh, it's all about the Pui Kong, okay? I'm not sure whether uh, some of you guys here have heard about this, or you can also uh, recognize the Fui Gong as a commanding nobleman, right? Hello. Yes. Oh, yeah. Today is Good Friday. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Hello, Echo. Right. So, um, basically, right, let me just start, right? If you have any questions, feel free to just... Um, Write it down here. I'll answer if I can. Okay. I'll try my best to look at the comments because it's not really coming up well. Okay. So, when it comes to this Fui Kong, right? So basically, this commanding pillar of Fui Kong uh, exists and appears in your pasta chart. Uh, but it's not the normal uh, Zhu Ping uh, kind of identification, this identification of a Fui Gong, or you can call it noble, commanding noble man, comes from the system of Sun Sha. Uh, so, you know, it's like peach, blo peach blossom is from Sun Sha, right? So it basically uh, becomes this whenever a certain stem comes together with a certain uh, earthly branches. Okay, so it's actually a representation of a pillar. Okay, so um, this Fui Kong, the word itself, uh, it's very commonly, uh, you, you can exchange this term itself as Kui Kang. I think some people use it Kui Kang. Uh, some people even call it Fai Kong. Okay, it's just a different language. But I, I learned it from the term Fui Kong. So it's more like a Cantonese version. So I use that more often. But if you want to actually identify and read at the classics, you can actually look at this few Fui Kang, uh, Fai Kong, or Bright, Bright Star, if I'm not mistaken, or some of them even call it Master Spirits, right? So there are so many different terms depending on which classic and which master you're referring to, right? So basically, whenever it comes to to the Fui Kong, all right? So you first need to identify what are these pillars, right? So basically, uh, there are four different types of Fui Kong pillars. Uh, so they are Geng Chen, Geng Xu, Wu Xu, and Ren Chen, right? Any one of you guys have all this in the chart? Or either one or two? I personally have two in my chart, <laughs> right? However, Right. Uh, whenever you have any of this in your chart, it doesn't necessarily make or make uh, or or it doesn't necessarily conform to this thing called the Fui Kong chart. Right. Having a uh, Fui Kong, uh, in because these pillars can exist in your day, your month, uh, your year, or your hour. Right. Uh, so it really depends on where this pillar falls to, right? So every time when any of these pillars is at the day, then it is conformed as a Fui Gong. So if you have this at your month, your chart is not a Fui Gong because at the end of the day, uh, the Fui Gongness is represented as the person itself, 
right? Of course, you may portray a, a little bit of the Fui Tong if it falls at specific pillars. But whatever we want to conform into this Fui Kong chart, all right, one of the first criteria is that it has to fall in the day. That is crucial, right? Because I think this has been um, quite a lot of uh, there's quite a lot of misconception on this. Anyone thinks that if they have this in their chart, right, they are considered a full Kong chart. Uh, no, the answer is not. In fact, uh, there are some classics that did say uh, in a presence of certain star, then only you can conform to the full Kong chart. Not every chart actually conforms to the full Kong chart, right? So, but make things easy today, all right? If you have this in your day pillar, you are quite Fui Kong, by the way, right? So, uh, but you see, what's the point of us knowing? What's the value of us knowing this? Because at the end of the day, what we are trying and what I'm trying to share here is, is that every Fui Kong has its own values. And let's show you this. These are the keywords, right? Uh, uh, see, Fui kong qualities, right? So I would break it down into these few keywords. Uh, first, they are a natural survivalist, all right? So uh, I would say that they are unbreakable. They are exceptionally tough and strong in character. Uh, they have this kind of strong determination to do whatever they want, right? Uh, but bear in mind, yeah, not necessarily means, uh, you know, for good reasons as well, because, you know, they are just very determined and stuff and they can hardly crash or can hardly be defeated in many circumstances. In fact, they are the type that, you know, do so well at harsh circumstances, right? Fui Kong people are also... Uh, uh, when I say that they are unbreakable, right, they, it also means that they can rise above the most challenging circumstances. So imagine like you keep slapping down something and it just keep bouncing back. In fact, in their mind, right, people who has is a Fui Kong in the day, right, in their mind, um, limits and, and constrictions and talk about impossible as a term doesn't really exist in their mindset, right? To them, it's like, they just have to do it. They just got to do it, you know? There's no such thing as uh, limitations and impossibilities, right? I do, because me being a Fui Kong as well, I have two Fui Kongs in my chart, but my day is one of the Fui Kong. When I was a kid, right, I did, my mantra is this, uh, nothing is really impossible. <laughs> Of course, now, okay, it's totally different. Now I understand much more, but the the very nature of a Fui Kong is that nothing can really stop their, what they want in life, right? In a way, it can be good and can be bad, right? We can see that holding on to uh, too many things, right? Uh, or, you know, being too stubborn can also backfire sometimes. And this could occur mostly if your Fui Gong, means your day pillar, is affected by some other negative interactions such as punishment and clash, right? So that is when usually the Fui gong -ness is actually affected in terms of, you know, their qualities and the outcome will turn out bad sometimes, right? So sometimes the Fui gong -ness doesn't lead to greatness as well, because it depends on your overall chart to see whether or not that pillar is affected, right? So anyway, coming back to being Fui Kong, right? they are very strong-minded, right? Uh, hardly can accept the fact that they are defeated, okay? <laughs> so in their mind, it's just that they are too powerful and too strong sometimes to others. So they are not really uh, the best and easiest person to work with because they, are, they have high expectations and their speed and their power and their energy, it's just there, you know, like energizer bunny. <laughs> you see, it's very hard, right? I know myself because I get a lot of feedback about that as well. It's really not easy to work with a Fui Kong because your expectation is that I can do this, why can't you do this? So just deal with it, right? So that is also a reason why whenever it comes to saying that a woman who is a Fui Kong, uh, it usually is a problem. Um, because, you know, 
women who are too strong, too opinionated, to you know, oof, drive and stuff like that, they usually have problems in relationship because they have their own belief system and they don't they don't just keep quiet about it, right? So usually relationship is an issue, right? So um, but the key the I think the essential part about Fui Kong is not just about their personality, but it's also what kind of things they go through in life, right? Fui Kong itself, you it's 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 a clear equation to hardship in life, right? Things will never come easy for Fui Kong, and this is their lesson, technically. Uh, and and I think it's pretty fair, you know, the fact that they have that kind of qualities, and the fact that you know life is never always that easy, and they don't really like easy life if you give them just something like that they probably were like oh what for you know I, I i'm here i understand that we need to put a lot of effort in a lot of things you know they, they know that right and at the same time life is not that easy for them as well so you know it's pretty fair sometimes right yeah it's very tiring who says this ivan chen are you a frikong <laughs> <clears throat> despite tiring usually the Fui Kong can really just go through it right because it's just it's just part of life already it's just part of their lifestyle it's part of who they are right but you know outsiders would usually see it's like oh my god their life can never just settle they settle one thing another thing will pop up usually uh it's when career is good relationship got problem something like that right and maybe or if not health has issues so it's never always like the nice time right this is you see great power holds great responsibilities right <laughs> so basically these are the kind of lessons that a lot of people have to learn right but despite being uh that as well right uh there are two different type of Gong, right so one is uh more on the scholar side right they are called the literally literally Fui Gong. okay i mean i I just extracted out the word from classics and another one is more on military. So as the words actually describe, right, literally is literally like a, um, you know, more scholarly type, more of the advisor type, more of the ones that use the intellect rather than uh, just use their action to actually do something, right? So uh, while military, it's more action oriented. It's like, okay, I got to do this. It's more skill oriented, right? So it's more physique kind of things, right? That's the difference, right? But both of them, both of these two categories of uh, Fui Gong still have the qualities. It's just that perhaps their approach and their mindset are very different, right? Uh, so the ones who are in the scholarly side type of Fui Gong, the ones that use the brain more, um, and also they need to always enhance their knowledge more is the Geng Chen and the Geng Xu, right? And while the military side, the military Fui Kong, the ones that need to focus more on action and skills, literally doing and getting themselves more hands-on are the Wu Xu and also the Ren Chen, right? So these are the two different types. So despite being a Fui Kong, they can still be broken down into two different types, right? So just remember that. So the flavor is very, very different, right? So, um, so let's break it down to each of the uh, pillars, right? So I think from you can already see among all the four pillars of Fui Gong, right? Uh, they are quite stubborn, all of them. Uh, if you notice and if you know how to read their stems, these, all of them have actually one similarities, few similarities, right? Um, you see, the Keng itself is stubborn, right? Uh, Wu itself is don't move, stubborn as well, right? Ren itself is very dynamic, very aggressive. So they all these four Fui Kong actually shows a very aggressive outlook. And I can tell you based on experience, it's very commonly mistaken as a seven killing star, right? As the outcome, because when people just can't look at your charts, right? Uh, when they see that kind of aggression, they might always think it's a seven killing, but actually it doesn't necessarily always have to be 
seven killing equals to aggression in the outlook and how you do things because the fui kongness shows that as well the commanding part the leader part you know the bossy part you know so the the in, the the part that everybody wants to win inside right so they show that kind as well and as you can see right it's always the chen shui chen shui right so you can see chen shui is a graveyard and they are seated on the yang earth as their their main chi right so you can see there's similarities in them. That's why they are part under that kind of configuration of Fui Kong, right? So coming back um, to visual quite blur. Okay, wait. I'll come back to you and Bintan. Wait. So now we can go back to uh, this part, Geng Chen, right? Geng Chen itself. Uh, these are the key words that I would describe a Geng Chen. Uh, they are very survivalist mentality, you know, all they think is just survival, 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 right? And they are very auction oriented, forceful and outspoken, and yet very strategic, right? Because um, this is a Geng sitting on a mountain, right? As you can see at the background of the image, right? It's like, you know, the, the, the sword step into the mountain and it's like Excalibur, you know, you're waiting for someone to actually pull it out and only the right person can pull it out, right? That being said, right, it's very tough. It's very hard to pull it out. That is why uh, usually if you are a Geng Chen, uh, day master, right, uh, usually, you know, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of pressure and force to actually... <clears throat> get something done right in fact um i would also say that as a Geng Chen, you must always put yourself under pressure like put yourself in that kind of environment because uh you are one who actually will succeed and be a better and useful sword right only under pressure so putting yourself within competition, going to a very tough uh, environment will actually make you a better pillar and a better gun at the end of the day, right? Uh, you are also very outspoken, right? This type of um, Fui Kong, right? It's, it's the type that doesn't store things, basically, right? Because you see the koi is actually at the storage, so it represents the output star. So it just likes to go against whatever that is not right and they don't keep it inside. Right? They it's a story, they usually just blood it out. And if your chart has a lot of water, imagine. So sometimes that's why Geng Chen can be also quite I I I wouldn't say uh, I wouldn't say the word aggressive, but very rough very gusty kind of feeling uh, because they just uh, you know vomit out everything they can be quite scary sometimes yeah but that is of course if uh, it goes through a lot of a uh, time to actually polish and sharpen the the, 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 the gung itself to a better quality and then slowly you know the negative quality will actually slow down because every gung at infant when baby it, it is not sharp anyway right so as a gung chun right as also a Fui Kong, right? You can see that you really need a lot of tough, uh, so-called like tough environment and circumstances to make you better as a, a person, right? And, and yeah, very strategic because it's still a water element down there, always trying to think, always trying to solve problems and things like that. So they are that kind of Fui Kong. They are that kind of, they give that kind of aura. It's, it's, they, they have similar aura, with the others, but they, are, they have a little bit of like differences, you know, their style. Huh? I would say their style is very different, right, with other Fui Kong. But they give that kind of aura as well, very, you know, they can lead, you know, and most of the time they like to make um, decisions that is very tough, right? So basically, like I said, Fui Kong, at the end of the day, it's all about hardship. So easy route, they probably won't choose. They will only choose the tough route. Okay? So that is the nature of it. Also, and being a Geng. My God. 
I cannot say much, <laughs> right? So <clears throat> the next Fui Kong here is Geng Shi, right? So there might be a little bit of similarities. Many times people can't really tell between a Geng Shi and a Geng Chen if they look at the person, right? But in fact, if they go deep, they can actually see the differences because from the outer look, right? You know, the, the dog itself is also sitting on the earth. So many times people tend to like, mistaken them in a bit and in terms of Fui Gong, they are both uh, Geng Chen and Geng Shi is also the literary part, the scholar part, the ones that you know like to think, like to come up with solution and like to learn, like to study, like to get new knowledge and things like that. So there's, they, are, they are very similar actually, right? So, uh, but the, the differences is this, right? The earth in the Geng, Geng Shi, right, in the, the, the metal dog is not that tough. Right, at least meaning the, the sword itself, right, it's not stuck inside the earth, right? Uh, and the difference is also, right, that the storage is a fire instead of a water. So fire and water, very big difference, but they are both at the sub chi, so probably people can't see, but it's at the storage. So it's there and it's a lot actually. So the difference is this, okay? Uh, and because fire itself plays a very important role for a gunk metal. Therefore, the outcome and how they do things at the end of the day is very different despite having the same aura, having the same first impression. Uh, because gunk shi itself, it's naturally being forged. They, that's why they are known as the knife that is already out from the earth and it's a sharp knife. Okay, rather than the earth that is stuck in, rather than the knife that is stuck in the earth, because naturally they have a fire underneath, and they are constantly being forged, like constantly, constantly being forged, right? And the the metal itself is quite strong because it's supported by another sin metal at the bottom, right? As you can see, there's another sin metal here, right? So the the metal itself is pretty strong by nature, so it actually comes out from the earth quite easily as compared to the tungsten, right? But because of that, right, uh, because they are constantly being forged, right, they become very sharp, they become very refined. Uh, that makes them one of the, not one, they are actually, Geng Shi is actually the hardest pillars among all the 60 Jiazi. Yeah, the hardest pillar, right, which is also, could also mean the most, uh, stubborn one, I guess I could say that, but Jia is also quite stubborn anyway, but basically they are the hardest, I would say, right? Uh, and their whole life is very, very painful because the fire is constantly burning, 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 burning. That's why uh, they are known as mentally and physically strong because they are not just strong from the outside, but deep inside, they have the core that is very strong as well. That's why usually Geng Shi people are very, they are mentally strong and physically strong, right? Uh, and they're always prepared for a battle. They're always prepared, even though they might be scared, depending on what's on the, uh, the, the, the remaining of the chart, but they're always prepared, right? Because, you know, they're always, the whole life, they're always constantly being burnt. Not, there's nothing else to say. They are always trying to get themselves ready for the next battle, right? And they only get better. They only get better each and every time they go through a battle, right? That is how a gang shi function, right? And basically, they don't really have any room for resting. The only thing that about a gang shi, right, is that despite how strong they are, despite you know that how how much they can deal with one thing in life, right? Their main thing that is going to pull them down in life is actually their ego and their pride, right? Because still they are sitting on the indirect resource, right? Despite them knowing the fact that they can do anything in life, they are quite emotionally um, affected in a way. Not, not in the type that getting emo or whatsoever, but... Indirect resource, right, is a, a, is a feeling kind of thing. I like to do, I will do it only when I like to do. It doesn't matter because to them, it's like, I don't have to prove it to anyone. That kind of feeling. To them, it's like, I feel like oh, I, I want to do it, I just do it. I'm doing it not because I want to prove to anyone, it's because I like to do it, I feel like doing it, right? So a lot has to do, 
uh, with their own pride and ego and on top of that has a lot to do with their own feelings. So that is usually one of their greatest downfall because if they use constantly use their emotions to make certain decisions, uh, you know, they they might fall out at the end of the day, right? So that happens whenever the day pillar is affected, like is it a clash, a punishment, or what's sort, right? All the bad interactions, right? So the poor quality of the country might appear and pop out, right? So um is there any question? All right, so great, no questions. So uh, based on that, they are also very intuitive, right? Because there's an indirect resource sitting on their chart. Uh, same goes to Geng Chen, they are also very intuitive. Uh, but because, you know, the presence of the intuition is not as strong as the Geng Chen for a Geng Shi, so many times a Geng Shi really struggles to actually believe their own intuition. Uh, so their kind of problem is very different with the Geng Chen and they crave for a lot of alone time as well, solitude. Uh, and that is why perhaps, right, uh, they are also more inclined to spirituality, right? Uh, Geng Shi is one of the 10 spiritual pillars, okay? But they struggle a lot in terms of tapping into it despite wanting it. So there's a lot of dilemma whenever it comes with a Geng Shi day pillar. Right, so that is their struggle, right? And I think their biggest lesson is about their ego and pride and the fact that, you know, they can rely too much about how they feel and from how they feel, they decide on something. But, you know, like I said earlier, every Fui Kong, they have to understand that great, uh, great, power hold, great, great power holds great responsibility and that sometimes means that you have to really put your egos aside. Uh, and, and I am a Geng Shi, by the way. <laughs> So I'm really speaking as it's me because sometimes pride and ego can really take over me and sometimes how I feel like I want to do really affects what I want to do at the end of the day. But sometimes we cannot, you know, we cannot take it as it is because uh, how in order to get things done, sometimes you really have to push aside your feelings, right? But it's not applicable for all, right? So this is the possibilities that might happen. Okay. Uh, the next one is on... Wuxi, right? Wuxi, okay, as you can see, it's a dry earth, we call it, because uh, it's, there's no water in this earth, and it's a wu and a wu, right? So, it's a very, very stable earth, like super stable kind of earth, right? One of the most stable earth, right? Another stable earth is actually a wuchen, right? But the Fui Kong is only a wuxi, okay? So, a wuxi itself, the storage is actually... Um, Thing fire. Therefore, I call them, as you can see in the background, okay, it's 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 a dormant volcano. You know, they don't explode all the time like a wu-wu, but they are wushi, right? So their their fire is actually, you know, it's there, it's sub chi, but and its storage is a lot, but it only will be clashed out time to time. So they are actually dormant and will only come out at a certain period of time. So, but it's there, right? So they are just waiting for the right time to actually burst, right? So they are very stable because, you know, as you can see, right? Very strong will and temperamental. The temperamental part actually comes from the fact that their fire can just blast any time, okay? Uh, so they are also very determined. So basically, they portray a lot of the, the earth quality, right? And I tell you, this... Wu Shi has so much information, right? Because they store and very trustworthy, very loyal as well. Okay, so they portray that kind of Fui Gongness. That's why they make a very good like military soldier because that that is the kind that you know, um, you you need this kind of person to protect basically, right? So that's why it's very important for Wu Shi person uh, as a Fui Gong, right? Uh, their skill sets are very important, meaning being hands-on about things and being hands-on and being more action-oriented to solve a certain problems, right? Because that is how they portray the Fui Kongness, right? So that is one way to see it, right? Another one is this, okay? The last one, in fact, is Ren Chen. Ren Chen uh, I'm not sure if you can see from the background, but it's actually, if you can't see, it's actually like a waterfall coming down 
to a big uh, mountain, the mountain shapes the waterfall, that kind, you know. So um, they are, you know, as uh, they are very independent, right? Uh, very dynamic as a run as well. Uh, and they form a very, very beautiful picture, very nice, very powerful, very strong image, right? They are nature, biggest, most beautiful thing, waterfall, right? So that's why they put, they, they are uh, very good leaders in that sense. Um, in a way, right? Uh, I think what's really important when it comes to a run chen is that they need to be controlled, right? Of course, depending on what it's, uh, in the remaining of a chart, but being a fui gong, right, it's very important to be composed and uh, be controlled, basically, because by nature, a run itself is very dynamic and they are very, very, very strong, okay? So being very, even when it's not controlled, okay, they are already very strong. Imagine if they are controlled, they are even stronger, right? So, um, the essence of them, okay, Arun Chen itself, is to learn how to control themselves because they can be very overwhelming, right? And But, you know, the quality of it is pretty nice. It's a very nice pillar because every run needs a Wu and it's there, right? So it really gives the almost perfect leader around and, and very competitive, very nice competitor. Um, because, you know, they have a koi at the bottom as well. So they are quite competitive by nature. Uh, but usually they, well, I would say depending whether the charts have their, it has negative impact, you know. So usually they make very, very good competitors. But also they, are, can, they can be quite temperamental in a way as well because they tend to flip around because they are sitting in the koi at the end of the day. Right. But essentially, what's really important as a Fui Gong in a Ren Chen is that they have to keep themselves composed because they are dynamic. And because of that, you know, you don't want the too, aggress too aggressive Fui Gongness to come out because you can really damage a lot of things, right? Being a Fui Gong. So being composed and being controlled as a Ren, uh, Ren Chen is very, very, very important, right? So basically, uh, this is actually the qualities and, you know, you can see, like I said earlier on, right, you can actually see a very similar traits among all these four pillars. And, you know, it's actually a Fui Kong, right? So uh, essentially, right, uh, it can appear on a natal chart, right? And you see, and when it appears in your natal chart, it can also appear at your day, hour, month, and year, right? So, but a Fui Gong chart is only when it falls on a day, okay? And you may have two Fui Gongs in your chart, like I have two Fui Gongs in my chart next to each other. Um, I would say it's not that good, right? Because having too much is also not that great. Okay, and both of my Fui Gong is actually clashing each other, right? So it's not that favorable if you have such situation, okay? So there's a lot of lessons to learn being that. Uh, however, if you have the, this kind of pillar in any of your chart, but not in the day, right? You still portray that kind of aggression. However, life isn't that tough because at the end of the day, a Fui Gong means circumstances and life is really tough. Right, so you may have that kind of aggression in a specific place. You may have that kind of competitiveness. You may have that kind of stubbornness. But the essential part about it is that life isn't as tough, right? So that's the only difference. Okay, uh, I think Queen Elizabeth has double Fui Gong in the chart. She's a Geng. She's a Geng Chen day, and I think she's a Ren Chen. I'm not sure. A Geng Chen and a Ren Chen in a month or something like that, if I'm not, because she's born on April, if I'm not, so there should be a Chen next to her or something, right? So usually when you have two, right, uh, life is tough and life is tough. <laughs> 
<laughs> right? So usually that that is the but that is the thing. That's why many times if like you don't have a seven killing or whatsoever, very easily mistaken as being aggressive because of because of Fui Kong, you know, because people don't really think much about Fui Kong. Yeah, it's only um at day pillar. It's only at day pillar to be considered as a Fui Kong chart, right? Uh, because like I said, essentially it's about the hardship that matters, right? Uh, that that's that's just that I, I would because I'm a Fui Kong, right? So I would just say hardship, that's it, you know, it's life, you know. Uh so you know it's applicable only at the day pillar. At uh but I if I'm not mistaken, there are also few classics that mention about broken chart and things like that. There are a few other criteria, right? But let's not talk into that depth, all right? For now, okay, I said it appears in later chart and it's only a day, right? Uh, it can also, you can also go through a Fui Gong 10 year luck pillar, yeah, by the way. And you can also go through a Fui Gong annual pillar. And that is uh, depending, you know? So whenever you go through a Fui Gong uh, luck pillar, it means you are going through that kind of energy, that kind of circumstances. So most of the time, it's a tough situation, right? Of course, depending on whether the tough situation is good or bad, depending on your day master, but circumstances will be more tough, right? I think 2020, 2012 itself, right? Uh, 2012, uh, it's actually a... 2012 is a run chen, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 2012 is a run chen, if I'm not mistaken. So that time itself is a tough year. Right, so that is the annual pillar, right? So depending on your day masters, right, and depending your external life circumstances, right, see whether it's good or bad for you. It depends on many factors, but you know what? Circumstances is definitely tough, right? Uh, besides that, ten year luck pillar as well. So same goes. You will face the Fui Gong energy time to time, depending on your luck pillar. All right, so it's. You the, the 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 essential part and the value of this sharing is that you have to understand the concept of it, and it can be applicable, right? It could be applicable to a human, it could be applicable to the luck pillar. You can you know applicable to the annual energy as well. Even month, I think. Oh, April month is a April month is a runchen, <laughs> right? So you can't escape. <laughs> Everyone is doing it. How to deal with people with fui gong? Oh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, John, right? Depending on which uh, Fui Gong your wife has, but in general, I would say you just have to let them eliminate their power, <laughs> okay? Because I, I can really say this from experience as well. Uh, for a Fui Gong, for a Fui Kong uh, women, right, they actually go through a lot of problems in relationship. Yeah. Uh, basically, they are like the pants in the relationship. But if their partner are not the type that embrace women with power, that will be a problem. Okay. I've went through many of that and I realized that, you know what, the man has to really find a, a woman. The, the, the woman has to really like uh, sorry, the man has to really like a woman's power, then only it can work out. And it's very important to actually just let the woman do the job, you know? <laughs> because that's, that, is how, that is how they function best. You don't stop them, you allow them. You, huh, it's very important, yeah? You need to give them a lot of support. Especially when it comes to a geng shi, yeah? Geng shi, at the end of the day, you have a you have a sin hidden, they are quite sensitive. Yeah. So many times uh, without the support of their loved ones and their family, they get super, super insecure. So like I said, John, depends on what day masters, which Fui Kong is your wife, right? So it depends because sometimes they needed more support. Uh, you can actually base on the five five love language. Some of them need more quality time and stuff like that. You can actually manage your manage in that way but in general a Fui Kong you just let them do all the bossy stuff let them make the decisions don't but you know that is what my suggestion is right being a Fui Kong woman myself so 
uh, just let them be, you know, it's, it's definitely okay when actually, right, and it's very important for them to actually have a voice in many things. That is a free call, okay? Because you know what? They are just people with authority, people with power, people with leadership. Just allow them, okay? So, um, yeah, so question, hi, just connect you, just to clarify. A day master under tiger. No, a day, a Kung Yin is not a Fui Kong. In fact, a Kung Yin is a spiritual pillar. Yeah, so no. There's only uh, two, only two Kungs. Kung, uh, Kung Chen and Kung Shi is actually a Fui Kong. Right? Okay. We got, I need to look at my comments from here. So, so um, yeah, so this is just my sharing for today about Fui Kongs, all right? Actually, there's a lot more about Fui Kong, but uh, the system is, the system has so many exceptions. Uh, auxiliary star, you know, the position actually matters. Uh, the, the timing actually matters, the mark actually matters. There's a reason why people don't really like using Sun Sha as a reading tool, uh, because that has a lot, a lot of criteria. So uh, I didn't want to share too much of that complications as well. So yeah, so this is it generally a Fui Kong, right? So um, I think that's it for my sharing for today. Uh, next week, I'll be doing, I think I'll be doing on spiritual pillars. I don't know, let's see. Because I wanted, I've been researching quite a lot about spiritual pillars. Uh, and I think it's quite relevant to what we all need today, you know. So uh, yeah, I'll be back next week with more spiritual and pillar spiritual pillar sharing uh there's 10 in total okay so i'll see how i split it up but okay uh i just need to do some promotion all right so if you guys are interested to know more about parts and any sort right i'll be conducting a workshop specific specifically just to talk about money uh, and this will be a four-day stay. You know, it's going to start on 24th of april consecutive weekends uh it's going to be 7 p.m to 10 p.m and I'm going to go through like everyday masters. Uh, what is your wealth element? Uh, how does it function? Do you even necessarily need to use your wealth element? And if you do not have any wealth element, what element can you use? And etc. And what are the cause of your financial problems? Basically, we want to also look at uh, what can cause your downfall financially, right? Uh, so I'll be doing quite a lot in this topic on wealth, right? So uh, if you are keen, this is more of a puzzle application, meaning I would need you to have a little bit of foundation on puzzle uh, because I'm not going to go through the clash combination, blah, 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 you know, not, not going through that anymore because I want to go straight on application and view things in a wealth perspective already, right? So if you are keen, uh, do enroll this. Okay, I'll leave the link at the description box. Uh, so yeah, so just let me know. Please personal message me if you want to know more about it in detail on the syllabus because I actually came up with the syllabus already, right? So guys, thank you once again for being here today. Uh, I'll be back weekly, 2 o'clock or unless if I don't, I announce it. But yeah, so for now, it's every Friday, 2 o'clock. I'll be back with more sharing. Uh, feel free to just drop me a message on what kind of topics you want to know and go through. Uh, because now I really find that there's so many people talking about it. Sometimes I really feel like whatever I'm talking is just irrelevant, right? So you can just drop me a message, right? Uh, whatever you want to know, right? So I will compile them and really check it out and see what I can share more, right? So great. I'll see you guys next time if there's no more question. Otherwise, just drop me a message, all right? So guys, bye-bye.